So in this video we're going to look at a Bosch 2.1 heat pump uh, air conditioning system that I've installed at my place. So this is a uh, the 5 ton slash 4 ton unit that they provide. The uh, 2 slash 3 ton unit is uh, a touch shorter than this. This one has the uh, Verizon network antenna on it. I am ways away from Verizon. It does get some signal so we'll take a, a look at that. So you can hear that it's sort of making a bit of a, a pulsing noise. So I'll tell you right away, if you need to live close to your air conditioner, you probably don't want to have this unit. If it was like on your balcony beside your bed or something, you'd probably become quite hated about it. But uh, if it's outside your place, you'll still know that it's there, but it's not terrible. And that's got to do with the uh, inverter drive. It's got like uh, 72 stages of inverter for the uh, compressor. And then there's like I think nine stages on the fan. So right now I can feel some heat coming out of this. You can quantify how much heat is coming out when you go through the uh, software. So right now you can see I'm sitting at uh, 25 hertz and it's basically about 920 BTU per Hertz. So you can kind of figure out uh, what cooling you've got from there. This is the uh, wireless gateway. You, um, it will go on to the cellular on its own and work. It might take a little while, especially where I'm located. The uh, Bluetooth, unfortunately, you have to take the cover off to um, turn on the Bluetooth to make a pair so you you could just jog your way through the uh, values in here you don't see a lot of value in the uh, wireless to be honest because what I found is a remote with me being off Verizon I don't know maybe someone who's on Verizon can tell me if it's different or not but it only tells you that the thing is either working or dead it's uh, nothing in between or more detailed than that. With my install, I put in a Square D disconnect here. I like Square D stuff normally, but I do not like this disconnect. It just has uh, an entry through the back and two in the bottom, so there's nowhere to install a uh, surge arrestor. So it's like a, a breaker, but it's not it's just a 60 amp switch. So I drilled through the uh, the base here and put my uh, surge protector here. If you watch the Bosch installation videos, they basically say you need to install one of these or you're going to blow boards. Then in the same video they say they will warranty the boards regardless, but rather than wasting everybody's time, just put in a surge arrestor. So I put one in here and then I put another one in on the uh, electrical panel at the house and hopefully that works out. It's not really provisioned for that so I put uh, lugs on the uh, wiring and went right onto the circuit board because it's got some pretty good fasteners for doing that. I was hoping that uh, we would see the number change here, but maybe it will as we're chatting. So, actually it just turned off, but that's all right. So well, I'm gonna do a full cycle anyway, cause it's kind of interesting the way that it works. So for information, this uses a, uh, a 60 amp breaker and you need a 40 amp wire. So I pulled in number eight through the house, I believe. So that's an expense if you're going with the five ton unit. If you go with the regular unit, you probably get by with the number 10 that you've got in your home. I have it set up when you'll see downstairs when we get there, that it's paired with uh, their 96% efficient furnace and a, um, a four ton coil. So there's some limitations on what we can get out of this for uh, heating and cooling. 
on the uh, outdoor unit. Then there's uh, good instructions on the inside of the panel that pretty much tell you everything you need to know. It's kind of neat that this system is Modbus and if you do any industrial electrical work you're probably familiar with Modbus. I'd be curious to get another one of these things and crack into it and uh, figure out the uh, Modbus tables and read them and then you could put that into home automation just for fun but not that's totally separate for 99.99% uh, .99 of the world. They, people wouldn't bother doing that. Um, so I've been using, well let's, just pointing away from my phone here. So it was John Stone Cafferty, is someone who's got some good videos on the diagnostics of this and uh, where I got the tonnage from. So basically um, what he talks about is that this system works on gas pressure or coolant charge, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it knows how much the indoor unit, the A-coil, is performing. And it won't ramp up the uh, hertz unless there's a need for it. Like it's not going to run full out 5 ton and freeze your unit inside. It figures it all out. So if we go into um, the Bosch Easy Air, I'm going to look away from time to time just because it's got a bit of personal information in it. But you, you get a map yeah, where all of your units are installed. You can uh, go into it It'll only allow you to register in American addresses. So you get the uh, model number in here. It's got uh, the pin number, which you don't need to know. But let's say you're going to do um, remote data through the cellular. That's all you get is a unitless graph, completely useless. You can register the warranty if you go through a bunch of hoops and with Bosch you can set up an account as an installer and do that. For charging the unit you do need a gauge set to uh, put in a bit of information. With this we had a 14 foot line set so we just brazed it, vacuumed it down and let it go. It's never had gauges on it. So, but you would need to weigh in otherwise. So now for um, on-site data, I need to push this blue button here. Uh, I think it's the middle one. So it's on, it knows the dip switches. I did adjust one of the dip switches to make it run a little more aggressive. So it may give it a couple more hertz than usual. And that helps with uh, a bit extra cooling and a bit extra drying or dehumidifying. You're supposed to be able to um, email, actually, You can hear it just got a call for cooling. So what's happening right now is that it's running the refrigerant through the line and bringing the, uh, any oil home that might have gone out into the system. And it does that every time. See the inverter down here, the heat sink for it. So anyway, it's kind of interesting that how it does this. So you don't need any oil traps or anything in the line. Let's go back to the software. The point being is that the software is not all that good. 
This is, uh, I think, the most up-to-date software. It's, uh, you're supposed to be able to, like, save the values, but I don't know where it saves them. Because you can't get to them unless you're connected to the unit. So there's no fault codes. Save values. I don't know. You can send by email, but it doesn't work. You have... It gives you its return email with a bit of information. So I'm just going to put in my own email address. Pardon the privacy, but uh, that's what a... So it says email successfully sent. It's never going to make it. So you can kind of watch the timing of the video here. So the unit hasn't started yet. It has a bit of a, a fairly long startup process. This will be a long video. It might make it to half an hour. I don't know. But uh, eventually it's going to kick on. Then it's going to kind of hunt around if it gets a big gulp of warm air. The uh, frequency will go up, and as the air starts to cool down, the frequency goes down. And so stage one will be <clears throat> one frequency, and then if I force it into stage two... My buddy's trying to give me a call. We will have to chat with him later, unfortunately. Um, yeah, if you force it into a stage two, it will... Uh, Run at a higher frequency. So let's just uh, pop into um, Eco B. So I've got it running uh, a band. The Eco B wants you to be within like three degrees apart Celsius, obviously. And I have an indoor, or sorry, two. Can't tell if that's coming through or not, but um, two temperature settings or thermometers in the house. So this is the main thermostat here on the wall, and then this is the bedroom, and you can see it's warmer and it takes the average, which is really quite nice. Like you can get a Bosch thermostat and. Uh, they be making the same one forever, like the BCC 100. There is a BCC, I think it's the 110 is coming out now, and it's uh, Energy Star rated, which, and the requirement for Energy Star rating is that it can cut your uh, energy consumption by a few percent per year and give your utility the ability to take over it. But we'll, we'll look on my laptop and look at the data but I have the Ecobee set up so that it basically does one run per hour for the most part. Uh, so that's been successful in kind of meeting the uh, desires of the Bosch engineers. So we're still waiting for this unit to start. I can't remember if it's a four minute starting process. I think it's something like that. So we'll uh, kind of wait around. I had to run a 1810 between the uh, air handler and the uh, Ecobee, which is not that easy to obtain. Here we go. And start to click and do its thing. Or not. And then I had some regular thermostat wire to uh, come in here. And then it's just set up for wire nuts. There's no lugs in here for the um, thermostat wiring. So I think your blue is for flipping between heating and cooling. Then you've got your uh, two stages and your power. I think something like that. It's easy enough to wire. No big deal. The big lugs are down here for your power. I do have it up on a base. They give you directions on how far it needs to be from various things and you shouldn't be above an eave. 
so you don't want stuff piling into it over winter and destroying it. But uh, so we're hoping this is good. If you were to mount it on the wall using Unistrut, you would be getting a lot more vibrations coming into your house, and you probably wouldn't like that. Um. Yeah, so we're kind of sitting here, kind of waiting for this thing to come to life. Although it's not actually calling, so maybe uh, the thermostat canceled the run? I don't know. Let's, uh, let's make it work here. So now I told it it's going to cool. It's going to go into second stage. Because I've, I've told it to drop the temperature drastically. Alright, so again, I'm going to kill some time here. Sorry. Oh, the fan is starting up now. So I guess the last one we saw when it was moving the refrigerant around was not part of the start. So the fan is going through its speeds here. What you'll find is that the low frequencies are like pulsing DC. It's not like, it's a kind of an annoying frequency. So it would be ideal if you're up higher in the frequency. If your machine is like undersized, you've got a lot of air going through it, that would uh, bump up the frequency. So I think when we started the video, it was around 27 hertz, and it was like, kind of chugging away. Now at 37 hertz, it's, uh, it sounds like a regular air conditioner. Like it is nice that it's not like, uh, it doesn't have a big contactor, it slams in a huge motor inrush. So now it's trying to find its optimal frequency so it's kind of uh, monitoring the refrigerant parameters, the temperatures coming and going, and the pressures, and it kind of knows how much load is on the machine, and it sets itself up accordingly. I'm gonna bring up the app again, so you can look at the uh, values. I'm just going to connect back up to it again. Like I said, it's uh, the 5 ton 2.1. It's sitting out there, so it's got the outdoor temperature and the frequency. It's starting to get annoying. Like, I think between the fan speed and the uh, compressor speed, the, the resonator, I'm not sure what the right word is, but thing is freaking annoying at times. Have the settings, the live values. Yeah, that e the email never came through. That's 100% dependable. So you don't need to set it to 5 ton, even if you have a 4 ton A coil inside. It's got the outdoor temperature, ambient, and exiting. So the 85, you feel it. It's kind of warm.
So it's sort of, I don't know what the uh, control loop is on this. It's probably in the manual how long it takes to think and uh, respond to the refrigerant. But you can see it's sort of hunting around trying to find its optimal value. I believe there are some charts. If not in the manual, the Johnstone Cafferty video definitely has some good diagnostic information. So the fan is on four, the compressor is running at seven amps. You got your uh, 240 volt line is at 248 here. Knows how long it's been running. So what I found when I first put in the system was that I wasn't getting enough cold air return in the house and the house was overheating. It was just like it was going up and I had to get more cold air return to force this to perform. And once I did that, I was able to get more tonnage. So when I did the calculations for the house on paper, it's just a bit over three tons. But realistically, it generally runs in the uh, first stage at about two and a half tons. Given that we have a big overhang, we got some trees and uh, what have you. But it's not gonna just give you five tons, like I've said a couple times now. So I think I might button this back up and go outside. There's not much to say other than like when you run your refrigerant lines, I got burned pretty bad on the my line set. The uh, small line set didn't even, wasn't in the box. And then the big one was like rock hard. It must've been a couple of years old. So that was kind of annoying. And but ultimately I'd recommend you probably just buy 50 footers of plain copper, and then you can buy the Armacell sleeves to put on after the install. And that way you can pick your insulation thickness and you can get the line set. You're gonna have way too much, ultimately, but your insulation's not gonna be all chopped up from sticking up through a wall and fooling around in the house. Um, yeah, so I'll see if I guess I'll pop over to the Ecobee and look at some settings there. But you can see I went from 40 down to 35. And uh, as the air cools down in the house, that's going to keep dropping. And uh, eventually... And I don't think... It, it's not reverse stage, so it's not going to switch stages or anything like that. But you have to turn off all the intelligence in the Ecobee to make this system work. Otherwise, it's going to be doing some weird stuff that is outside of what uh, Bosch wants. So we'll, we'll get on to another scene here. Okay, so here we got the two thermostats for the house. The one on the right is for tankless hot water heater. This one's a ream and it only provides you with the uh, upper temperature setting really and you can turn off the machine on and off. Some of the good ones will allow you to see gallons per minute and what have you. But anyway, for the Ecobee, this is their premium one that allows you to add security equipment if you add a fee to it. And it also allows you to have the external sensors, like there's one in our bedroom, where we get a whole lot of sunlight in there. So to set this up for a Bosch, you go into settings and preferences. You need to turn off the smart recovery for the heating and cooling so it prevents it from coming on early in the morning and trying to hit your set point. So really with this thermostat, you're gonna dumb it down to an unintelligent thermostat. You're gonna leave the temperature one temperature all the time and let it run like that. And the um, outdoor unit will do everything for you. So you turn off those two settings and you go into installation settings and thresholds and uh, you can't tell it to run once per hour but you do turn off overcool you 
you make, turn off reverse staging, auto, auto, and I think that is it. There's not much to it. And you'll be uh, all set. So now we're going to take a look at um, the Ecobee website. So you can see where it registered me running the second stage for two minutes or something like that. So you can see in this house that um, you can it's kind of hard to tell with this because it's like five minute intervals that Ecobee is providing. But you can download the data into a spreadsheet and look at it to get a bit more of an idea of how long you run per run and how many runs per hour you get. But you can see that um, the green is outdoor temperature so it comes up and uh, the unit starts cycling, right? So in the afternoon, it's plugging away. In this case, it never hit the second stage. There, um, I made a set point change here, and that ran it for uh, a while. Again, it's hard to tell, like even if you zoom in, it doesn't really, it doesn't give you any better information. But every once in a while, this was a real event where it picked up that it needed to uh, run hard. There's a download data here. Look, you can look at the overview. Top 57%, that, that would mean you're the, the bottom 43. I think you're a polite way of saying you suck. And uh, because I have it set, for one temperature all the time, Ecobee is not too impressed with me. But we're here for comfort, right? Not for savings necessarily. It takes about two months for this data to populate. That's how long I've had the system in play. It went in on the July 4th weekend of this year. I've got no schedule. It just runs as told. Actually, I will show the humidity. So this house, you can see that the, it tracks quite a bit between outdoor and indoor humidity. It's um, going to react. This house does not have a very good vapor barrier. You could have follow me where you uh, the two sensors, one becomes the master wherever the people are, but I just have it averaging. That works better for me. Yeah, having a yeah, you turn off the uh, Eco Plus. That's another thing in the thermostat. Yeah, I should have said you've got to turn that off and turn off Follow Me. You just want the average. If it's fooling around with the data, it's not going to work very well. You don't want it to be smart. You can see the heating and cooling. So I've not done very much heating with this system as of yet. We're kind of in the fall and typically we still want heating or sorry cooling and the ox heat's not set up yet I don't have the uh, what you would call it the uh, flue gas piping connected yet so you can download the data for a month I'm just gonna pardon me while I just kind of look away because I don't want any important information to come up. It's not that I want to hide anything, but there's a mix of things on this computer aren't all my information. So you can see the time is in five minute intervals. So you have to add them up to see when it was running. And then these, if you freeze the frame, you can keep that, the header for you. There's numbers there, what is that? The cooling stage, maybe I will try to freeze frame this. 
if I can do that quick. So your little Excel tutorial for today. You go to freeze panes, so you gotta click on the top row that you would not want to. Yeah. And now it's uh, allowing you to keep your top. So I'm not sure what these numbers mean. Yeah, those are seconds of the stage so it tells you you have to add them all up to see how long it ran per hour so let's look at that so from four down to uh, five I had one run and that it ran for probably 30 or 40 percent of the, or sorry 50 percent of the time or more so it had one run, it's not short cycling or anything like that. So that is what I was trying to show here. So now I'm gonna get set up downstairs and we'll look at the rest of the installation. So this is the installation here. It might be quite alarming to see the furnace on its side in the basement, but there's a reason for that. So this is a side split. And uh, if I was to stand this furnace up straight, it would come up to here. So if you want a two inch hat on top of your furnace, I guess you could go that route, but uh, it's not going to really work realistically. So we've got this hanging from the ceiling on strut and threaded rod. And I'll tell you a secret, you can go to an electrical wholesaler and get threaded rod for in Canada they're like eight dollars a piece for a ten footer. Or you can go to Home Depot and pay like six times the price. So you go to a wholesaler to get this stuff. You get your Armacell from an HVAC wholesaler if they let you in the building. Or if you're an HVAC installer, great for you. Um, you do need to install a union on here to be able to service the A-coil. The way the A-coil is set up, if you want to do uh, side flow, you got to go face to face on them for uh, going this way it just if you look through the instructions it'll show you how to uh, set it up and that actually kind of nests kind of nicely together you can get your screws in here the uh, flue gas is not hooked up yet like I'd mentioned so the gas is off can't have any dangerous situations in here and it's off inside of there as well um, to look through the paperwork, when you're setting up the system, you go through this chart, and there's two charts. This is the uh, SEER Year 2 chart. It's the newer numbers, and you pick up something that's matched as a pair. The one with the tick map box is what I've got. So I've got the 5-ton uh, outdoor unit. A four ton BMAC, which is a C size, and then a um, the 80,000 BTU furnace with a four ton blower on it, which is a C size. The C4 is that. And that'll tell you it's going to have uh, 42,500 cooling and 44,500 heating. And uh, it tells you your CFM. So this is like part of the problem of this house is that it had a 90,000 BTU furnace and the ductwork couldn't really work with it. So it was like cranked up way too high and didn't perform very well. So we kind of changed the way the configuration was. The furnace used to feed in here and go one way, but now it kind of feeds in not the middle of the duct runs, but it, it gives a bit more each way. And the intent is to probably put a second return on the bottom of the furnace and run a uh, another return up into the attic through the garage. It's gonna be a fair bit of work. 
But uh, anyway, the point being is that you need a lot of airflow. This uh, Honeywell 4 inch 16 by 25 is kind of marginal. If you read the manual, there's a few important pages that I've gotten tick marked here. Look at so cutting these rubber hoses is freaking annoying to attach that drain vent like that. Meh. Not a fan. Kind of tells you how to set this up. You have to move some of the uh, impulse lines to different locations and uh, you have to hook up the drain lines as well. It's kind of neat that the condensate box is you can see right through it and see what's going on. So that's kind of cool. It gives you your uh, distances for different sizes of conduit. It gives you your positions for your venting. And what else did I get tick marked in here? The uh, dip switches. Um, you really you want to set up your pressures to achieve the CFMs that are in here. And you can look in the BMAC instruction sheet, CFM versus pressure drop. So this is for the BMAC coil manual here. And ideally, you would use uh, one of these guys and set it up. But for me, what I've had to do is I just have the highest possible dip switch for your my first and second stage just to get the air moving through the house it's probably not quite set up for energy star values but that's unfortunately where I'm at with this home you have ductwork limitations that you really can't resolve all the time and then the, the wiring diagram which I think is inside the furnace as well I'm sure it's on one of the doors kind of tells you how to hook things up and uh, with the humidifier, you should be running it on uh, warm water. So like right now, it's a takeoff on the cold water. So I've got, I had run a new takeoff off the hot water, but anyway, that's something to do. And then I gotta put some arm cell over the line. It's gonna run my uh, tankless hot water a bit, but that's just uh, the nature of the beast. Cause this home needs humidification because of the vapor barrier situation. It gets super dry in here in the winter and then moist in the summer. And that's just the way it is. Um, you can use HVAC rated sealant in a number of locations. You can use uh, tape, you can use mastic, you can do whatever you need. But you do need to have your ductwork sealed up nice. You need catch pan for it as well and because of the length of this thing can't really get a, a proper catch pan for it. The, um, when you're doing the line set it comes with a loose filter so you'll have to put it, you need to just check that you've got a bi-directional filter here filter dryer and you take off this cover you take off this plate and you and move it around and you need to put a wet rag on the bulb that's in here to protect it because uh, people unfamiliar with this may not do that and there's a possibility of damaging the uh, bulb on the uh, expansion valve and you don't want that to happen um, so from here we've seen it run for the most part in cooling and it sort of noisy outside so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get my uh, phone back down here and we'll flip this into heating for a little bit and you will run it through the paces because it's a little bit different again like for someone who's never had a heat pump before you're like what is going on but it does stabilize but we'll, we'll go through that okay so we're going to set the uh, heat pump here to uh, 23 or so that way we don't like overdo it and force it into emergency heating and 
just going through the process. I've told it to warm up a touch. Maybe we need to go a bit further than that. It's a bit funny when you're running a band versus uh, heating or cooling. So we'll let it think about what's going on there for a little bit. This home has one booster fan in it. And uh, I'll put in a link in the description. This one actually works really well for trying to get air a long ways away from the furnace. Where bef without this, like if you put a, a piece of paper on the vent, it wouldn't even lift the piece of paper up. And now we're getting a, an appropriate amount of air going through it. It's run off of uh, pressure sensing to kick it in. So when the furnace runs and makes a bit of pressure on the duct, this will turn on. Another option would be to use a functional devices relay and wire it into the furnace. That's an alternate solution. you playing, pardon me, playing with both options there. You can see my uh, vapor line, how freaking bad it is. But they sold me, not impressed. Then the uh, I had to buy the uh, liquid line separate. So I haven't quite triggered anything to happen yet. You'll hear the fan on the furnace running because I uh, tried to get it going a minute ago before I turned on the video and it wasn't quite acting ex as expected. But the intent here is that I want you to be able to hear the pulsing of the uh, line when it's operating. Trying to think if there's anything else to talk about here while we're waiting for this to fire up. But yeah, you need to have your drains. You don't want your humidifier to overflow into your furnace or your A coil and into the furnace and flood everything. So you kind of leave that open and low, lower than everything else. And uh, if you're a professional in the trade, you all know what I'm talking about. If not, just think about that. You have to have the extra holes plugged so you're not blowing cold or hot air out of your coil. You gotta have a trap on here. You could field assemble a trap out of 90s or you can buy one of these things for like 10 bucks. So I go the, the 10 buck route. It's a little bit less work, a little bit quicker. The manual talks about using gear clamps on here. I'm gonna see about that and it's more convenient than gluing on the uh, flue gas but I don't know like on my tankless it's a little more designed and it does have clamps but it, it does talk about it in the manual to do it this way but it they don't do that in the Bosch instructional videos they go glued on so I'm a bit unsure about uh, the appropriate method I need to bump up to three inch Kind of as soon as I come out of the furnace to make my uh, route through the 90s acceptable. Okay, I just switched it over to heat instead of heat cool. And I've got it set to 25. Sorry, it's taken me a couple tries to do this. Like I said, I don't haven't gone through a heating season yet. All right, things are happening now. Air handler is starting up again. When you're doing your initial testing, they always talk about letting the system run for like at least 10 minutes before uh, you start taking any readings off of the app or off of the control board, because it takes time for it to stabilize. We kind of saw that at the beginning. 
or it's sort of hunting for a, a steady frequency. You can see the uh, chunks of armacell I've got there, they're like six footers or something like that. The equipment all comes on pallets with uh, good packaging for the boxes or like good boxes to go over the machines so they're quite protected for shipping and handling although I have seen a number of uh, I heard that whoosh or not you do see uh, damaged units for sale on eBay where they've knocked over a stack of them ten tall probably and beat them all up that's an option but I don't seeing it being a, a great purchase in most cases. So the delta on the heating is actually pretty good. Like the duct work gets hot. Like I've been in uh, some heat pumps that go into the ground and there's like almost no delta and it's almost feels like it's imperceivably warm air like you, it almost feels like cold air all the time whereas this actually feels like a furnace is running it's making nice warm air which i do appreciate because of the amount of duct in this basement here it's probably worth insulating. It's something that's uh, going to be looked at in the future. So I just got my hand on the, the ductwork trying to feel for some heat. But I anticipate that we're going to hear some liquid pulsing through the line here as it kind of gets set up and again it'll after it runs for a bit it'll stabilize and it's not as perceivable but at times it will get your attention so if you're looking for a silent system the Bosch is probably not the one you want you should get an installer to bring you to a place that has one of these and run it through its paces if you are thinking about getting it and you want quiet if you have certain expectations or needs. The uh, components inside of the Bosch are typically just uh, commodity parts. It's the only thing that might be special, well, what is special in it is the control board. Everything else is just standard commodity stuff. Whereas the outdoor condenser everything is unique to Bosch essentially so you won't be able to get any parts for the condenser unless you're talking to Bosch but for this dude here you can get parts pretty much anywhere so that fan just cycled it runs for a certain length of time then it rechecks the Delta You can hear that or not, the rumbling. Here you can sort of tell that it's starting to uh, initiate the heating cycle. Here's a bit of vibration is starting. Don't really know how to share that with you.
it's present a little bit in the cooling, but it's, it's more noticeable in the uh, heating stage. But like for me, I can tell that the frequency is hunting outside right now. So this will be an awfully long video, I'm sorry, but like if it's just uh, kind of the nature of getting familiar with the system and catching it do everything that it does. But if you're looking at investing $20,000 or what have you, you probably should spend an hour learning about it. Depending on labor rates, and uh, traditional pricing where you are. That's sort of what you can be looking at. So on a side note, when I initially commissioned this, I had a 60 amp GFI breaker that I tried to use for the outdoor unit and that did not work. It was tripping the GFI. So you do need like a regular 60 amp tandem breaker for the system. Don't bother trying to GFI it. I just happen to know from uh, practical experience that's not going to work. So we're getting a, a bit of heat through the system now. It's not as pronounced as I was uh, anticipating, it might be, anticipating that it might be, but I want to give you full disclosure that it, at times it can be annoying. And if you read the uh, comments on uh, product reviews, there will be people who talk about it. So I felt like I should try my best to show that it's happening. Like you can feel that there's something going on in there. And then depending on how your lines are run, how your unit is mounted. If it's sitting on a concrete floor, is it hanging? Is it in your attic? Or where is it? There's going to be a, a different experience for that. But because of the, like I said, the great height of this unit, we had to mount it sideways and uh, get the humidifier put in here so that it picks up before it branches to each direction. So that's a consideration. There was a, a Lennox 90 ton unit with a field installed coil instead of using a cased coil previously and it was uh, quite a bit shorter. But even then with the three ton cased coil it was still pretty tall and not really uh, installed according to instructions. So you'll you may need to do some uh, fabrication work to get the system installed. You are one of your partners uh, to install it. And I guess we're going to kind of end it like that. And this, this, I'm not getting the uh, output that I was hoping to get from uh, this thing here. But it's definitely making heat. And touch it against it, you can feel the reverb through mechanical contact or not. But just a little bit right now, but like I said, you'll know when it's running on heat. And uh, that's a, probably all the information I can really share with you. I'm not going to be able to provide any tech support for you or installation advice. That is not my area of expertise. But I just want you to know what I'd gone through uh, getting this installed. You need to have good cold air return. You're gonna need some space to make it fit. The steel is quite heavy in this compared to other brands, so you do need to have good sheet metal screws or you're gonna run into some struggles. Um, trying to cut open that box 
is a bit of a chore. I have uh, power shears for snipping and you kind of need that to uh, open up the box otherwise it's not going to go very well for you. Now you can hear the reverb a little bit here. So um, yeah I guess I'm going to wrap it up and uh, hopefully I've shared some valuable information to you. So uh, thank you for watching.